first job I ever wanted to do was become a zookeeper and eventually I went to university to read zoology and I became very interested in animal behaviour. From that it was a fairly easy jump to realise that to study the control of animal behaviour you had to understand the brain. At which point I suddenly thought well no really what I'm really interested in is the brain and the, how the brain controls aspects of cognition such as learning and memory. Damage to certain brain structures massively impairs memory but leaves other aspects of thinking intact. And the problem is what are those structures, can we identify them and why do they impair memory? We've known roughly where those structures are and an awful lot of progress was made in terms of one brain area, but very, very little progress was made on another area called the diencephalon, which lies right in the middle of the brain. So I've been studying this for about the last 30 years using a variety of different techniques to bring together different levels of analysis of how structures within this area called the diencephalon work together and how they work with other regions. And in doing so, uncover a whole set of connections and pathways within the brain that seem to be vital for new learning and memory. I'm sure almost everybody knows of someone who is losing or starting to lose their memory. Most commonly this is because of things like senile dementia such as Alzheimer's disease. Our attempts to understand why brain damage can lead to memory loss and the diseases that cause that have focused very heavily on one part of the brain which centers around a structure in the brain called the hippocampus. My research has focused on another part of the brain, which is also vitally important for memory, and which now seems to work with the hippocampus. But the problem is, until you've identified that structure, you've, or structures, how they work with the hippocampus, you can't start to appreciate how they may also become very important for understanding brain damage, brain illnesses that lead to memory loss, and ultimately how you can find wider targets to try and address, attack and cure memory problems. The fellowship from the Royal Society means an enormous amount to me, really at two different levels. Firstly, at a personal level, it's the realisation that other people, other scientists, really have understood what it is you've been trying to do, how it is you've been trying to change and inform people's ideas about aspects of brain function. Sometimes you're doing research and you feel that you're in a little bit of a vacuum, that you really don't know whether the ripples that you're sending out are being received. So at that level it's incredibly important and, and terribly rewarding. But it's also very important because the research I do involves lots of different techniques, it involves working with lots of different people. And those people contribute little bits of the total problem. So they have to take it rather on trust that the little bits that they're contributing really matter. And so something like this fellowship really tells me, but tells them as well, that their contributions were incredibly important in putting together this much bigger story. So my research is focused very much on identifying precisely which structures are important for new learning and memory. At the same time, there is a much bigger question, which is the question, why are those structures important for memory? Why is it that distinct different parts of the brain have to work together to support memory. What is it these other brain regions are bringing that is so vital? That's a much more difficult question and it's one that we really are only sort of scratching at the surface on and that's, that's a big enough question to keep me busy for a long time. <laughs>